To enable that org presents mathematical literacy, data handling, populations and samples. Right, this is the handout that you have received and we're going to go through the part that's about populations and samples. The definitions of populations and samples. The population is the total amount of people or objects that you're investigating. So people will be, let's say, children at the school and objects, if you're going to investigate objects, it can be about plants or animals or cars or cooling bottles. Right, for example, if you are investigating the mathematical literacy marks of the grade tens in your school, then the population will be the grade tens in your school that take mathematical literacy as a subject. Right. A sample is limit is a limited amount of participants from the population. For example, when you want to know how many people in South Africa use a cell C as their cell phone provider, it is impossible to ask every person whether he or she uses it or not. Therefore, you have to decide on a certain amount of people that you are going to ask this question to. Right, how to choose a sample. Sorry, let's quickly go. How to choose a sample. Your sample must be as large as possible. For example, you want to know how many grade eights in your school smokes. Good grief. <laughs> um, there are 150 grade eights, which is your population, but you decide to ask 20 whether they smoke. Okay, so that's a sample. It might be 18 out of the uh, 20 that are asked um, that smoke, so that you make the conclusion that most... 90% of your grade eights in your school smoke. Actually, if you ask all 150, you find out that only two grade eights smoke, 15% of the population. So in reality, a small percentage of the grade eight smoke, but you, your sample was too small, so therefore it was biased. Okay, so this means that if you have quite a large group, you have to ask from let's say 150, you, have, you can't just ask one circle of friends because they're going to have all a similar habit. You have to spread your sample across the board. So you're basically going to ask one person from or 10 people from each class. Let's say there are five classes of 30 each. You're going to ask um, three from each class. Maybe do it across different genders and from different um, f circle of friends, right? So biased means that you're choosing a group that doesn't represent the whole grade. You're basically choosing one, only girls from one group of friends, right? The subject that you're investigating will determine what sample you will choose. For example, if you want to know something about all ages, it is important to include all age groups. And another example, if you want to find out how many households have access to running water, then you must include people of all races, black, uh, white, colored, Indian, and all social standings, squatter camps, from squatter camps to the upper class. So you're going to go to the rural areas, but then you're also going to go to the very wealthy in South Africa. Problem with bias samples. It is unrepresent uh, an unrepresentative or bias sample is one that does not represent people of all races, social standings, and languages. It's uh, right. A bias sample um, may have one of or more of the following problems. The sample was taken from the wrong population. The sample did not represent people of all races, social standings, and languages, etc. The sample was not selected randomly. Randomly means that you ask every fourth learner from the class list and not just go to one group of friends. The questionnaire was, questionnaire was badly designed and lastly the conducting of the interview wasn't up to standard. Right, exam, uh, exercise about population in samples. In each case, a hypothesis is given. State what the population is and then describe how you would choose a representative a representative sample and how large the sample would be. You made um, 
have to do research for example on the internet to find out uh, what the population is so let's quickly go through this how many girls in my school smoke uh, cigarettes right so your population will be the size the amount of girls in your school and the sample size will then be um, uh, let's say 20% of the girls Is it necessary to ask the boys? No, because your hypothesis is how many girls. How many South African children brush their teeth at least once, once a day? So the amount of children in South Africa. And you're going to try and ask at least 5% of children across the whole of South Africa. How many dogs in South Africa were vaccinated? This would be the amount of dogs in South Africa. And here again, because this, the population is so good, you're again going to try and good 5% of dogs. 3% of the South African population are between 25 and 29 year olds. Okay, so you're going to go to the whole population. Statistics South Africa have a, has a very great website, so you can find lots of information there. The population of South Africa, and you're going to ask 3% of people the ages. Uh, what is the average amount of hours that South African males spend at work? Um, Okay, so South African working males. That's your population. And you're going to again try and ask 5% of working males. So you're going to work out how many, let's say there's a million working males in South Africa, 5% of that is um, 50,000. Uh, yeah, yeah, 50,000 working males. Uh, um, males, you're going to ask them. How many pensioners in South Africa receive a enough money to survive monthly? So you're going to go to the pensioners. Okay, amount of pensioners. Um, and this again would be 5% of pensioners. Again, because you are doing a survey about the whole of South Africa, you can't go to 50% of them because the uh, the sample will just be too big. Instruments for collecting data is tomorrow's work. Okay, so that concludes this lesson. Thank you very much.